Well, welcome to another edition of Great Business Minds. And we've cast the net a bit wider than uh, we have previously. We've gone to the other side of the country to uh, meet a man that's got his fingers in more pies than little Jackie Horner. Craig Hutchinson, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you, Glenn. I've never been on a show before where I've less lived up to the title than <laughs> the title of your show. So <laughs> humbled to be asked to join. I didn't actually compute the... The, uh, the name against the, the oh, guests. Mate, we've, we've come up with many names. We, we were working on the Friday Wine Club, but it's probably <laughs> early in the day. Yeah, that's probably a bit more appropriate for me than Great Business Minds. But anyway, Thanks. nice nice to be here. Thanks, Glenn. Good to talk to you, mate. Now, Craig, I've got some idea of the businesses that you're involved in, and I see you've moved into Sydney as well just recently. Um, but to the uninitiated, can you give us a bit of background? Tell us all about <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry, we had a little audio issue. I think it's okay now. Yeah, so we, um, we in essence, are a content provider that connects brands to fans on scale. We began our journey making content for other platforms, uh, almost or most in sport, sports and entertainment. And as we grow and grow, we've developed more and more owned radio assets and owned assets. So we've got an office in every city of Australia. We've got and humbled to be part of the Bunbury community now. Uh, we love radio. It's not all that we do, but it's more than half of what we do, and it's a big part of our focus and direction. Uh, we're in digital. We're in uh, content. We're in. We make television shows. We've, we're in stadium advertising. We're in. Uh, we've got a, a share in a basketball team. We own a magazine, two magazines. Um, yeah, we, we've got a raft of media assets that really try and solve problems in the brand world, and we're a client-first business that uses talent as advocates to try and drive these campaigns. Our point of difference is clearly our talent-led advocacy in campaigns. We fundamentally believe in the power of advertising for brands, both from a brand point of view and also from an activation or sales retail point of view. And we love to be part of the communities that we invest in. You know, we're not really, we don't want to be one of those businesses that sits back from a distance and doesn't, doesn't roll our sleeves up and get involved in the community. And that the opportunity to work um, in Bunbury and to even to connect to you today, Glenn, and your audience, given the incredible business you've built in Bunbury and the way you've positioned yourself uh, and your team and colleagues as part of the, the Bunbury community is something that we absolutely hope to emulate and, and borrow from. So hats off to you. And I think it's a great part of the world. Like how, how lucky are we to be able to be a small part of the, of the Southwest experience? Yeah, and it's, it is a great part of the world and we'll let you in at some stage. But we'll, we'll wind back... <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to, and I'd like to talk to you and, and give you the opportunity to discuss about what you've you've got into here in in the southwest and how exciting that'll be for you. But a lot of what this uh, this series has been about is talking to people about their experiences during the pandemic, and and I guess so that they um, they realise they're not alone. It's one of the things that I realised pretty early in the case that in some ways we're privileged to live through, through these times because. Um, it, it, they're so extraordinary and so extreme. So when we all went into shutdown, obviously it had a massive impact on your business. I mean, you were very much aligned to sport, sport all shut down. How did you handle it? What goals did you set for yourself? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's only what, it's less than three months and we had given up on our, you know, our Bunbury move. We thought that would had come to the end of the run. We'd committed to do it. We'd given up on our Sydney move and we've been able to, to, to find a way through that in three months. So I think the first thing was for us working out that we we're in a pickle quickly and, and to move quickly. Like we, we identified that with all sport going off and our business being built mostly on sport, we had areas of our business like the AFL record, which is sold at venues. It's clearly not can't be sold at venues and event business. We're running 400 events a year. That was quickly going to turn to, to, to none for a while. Um, we had, you know, a whole raft of areas where we were exposed. Um, but I think credit to our team, we, we worked really quickly to adjust to a new order. In my mind, I started thinking, look, our, our old business is really gone. Our new business starts today. And what does the new business look like? Because a lot of things, opportunities and challenges and threats are going to come up through this. Um, we've had a real commitment to, to manage our costs like everybody. Um, we're on JobKeeper like everyone else, like revenue, yeah. Um, hit and down. Um, and we've just had to work our way through, but I, I'm really proud that the team made quick decisions. Uh, I'd liken it to probably if for those cricket fans who might be watching, we were 
probably playing, playing big bash cricket for most of the last 10 years. We were a bit cavalier and we were trying to hit the ball over the infield and we'd get out occasionally and, or often. Um, and so really our mindset had to change in the first week or two, like everyone's to defence. Yeah. But then it quickly shifted to, well, we've shot selections, everything now. We've got to still hit the loose ball for four. Um, you know, there's no point just sitting there and defending. And so you've got to have a, some attack and you've got to be bold enough to build for the future. Um, we tried to work with every client individually on their own needs and show as much empathy and compassion as our, um, our means and would allow. And we've really tried to take long-term viewers of our customers. And I, I think we would spent 14 years building partners in our business, not customers isn't the right word, you know, invested brands who partner us. So we didn't want to take a selfish two or three month view of that. We wanted to look at the next 14 years and how we help them through this time. But then you got to marry that up also against your means to survive, which like everyone, we were in that fight and, you know, and not out of it either. Um, it, like everybody, it's, it's a changing economy and, and changing world. So they were the focuses. Um, and the other thing was it changed every day. Circumstances change. We trade in many communities. Western Australia is different to South Australia. It's different to Victoria, to Sydney. It's been very complicated. Uh, lots of conversations with the exec team. Uh, lots of reviewing numbers. Uh, it's been a real, real ride. Um, yeah. Been extraordinarily interesting too. And we're, I know we're a better business than we were three months ago. It's amazing, isn't it? It's your yeah. point. Yeah, and it is. Yeah. We had, we've all, we've all had to roll with the punches. And then I think once the shock sort of passed, and it was like, okay, well, this is what it is. Um, yeah, I think a lot of businesses have evolved in a, in a really strong way. I remember watching you uh, one night on Footy Classifieds, and it was obviously hurting because. Caro was asking you about your business and, and so on. And I'm interested in terms of perhaps some of the stories that you might be able to tell about, I don't know, some experiences with your staff um, or, or clients that you might otherwise not have ever imagined happening. Is there anything that, you know, someone stood up and in a way that you went, wow, that's really showing the character of that person or of that? Yeah, order? I think um, tough times don't test character. They reveal it. And, we've had the character of so many great people revealed and we've had the character of so many great clients revealed too. Like the sense of team, like realistically, we're not a media owner just selling advertising to advertisers. We are trying to be like you are uh, an incredible part of their solution to grow their business and grow their sales. And fundamentally, if you, um, if that is who you are, then you have to understand when something like this happens that there are times that some brands just cannot do that for a while. Yeah. Um, equally, those that have the means to do that are presented with an extraordinary opportunity because the um, ability to get share of voice was extreme. The ability to pull away from your competitors, huge, mm. you know, and put distance on them if you had the means. Um, and the availability of media assets was at its strongest in April and May because a lot of businesses, not just ours, were, were shedding clients in that period. So, and there's a hundred years of research that says those that market through downturns aggressively come out and take market share and grow and thrive into the future. So I fundamentally believed in that anyway. The challenge was to, to have huge empathy for those that, that, that couldn't and then try and help those that could attack hard. Um, and then try and take a long-term view. And that's uh, not always easy because we're all trying to pay the bills. Um, we've got staff on reduced days and hours and you know, myself included, pay cuts and all those things that everyone's had to do. Um, my thinking was shared sacrifice was better than making someone an unfortunate, you know, yeah. uh, uh, someone more unlucky than others and to find a way and not lose sight of what we built. And then also knowing that there'll be others out there that are, that, um, that are losing sight of what they've, they've built. And so there's opportunities as well. So it's a dance, isn't it, Glenn? It's a balancing act. Um, it, it is, but uh, I think most of us are starting to see light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully it's not um, Paleo Pete that's holding that light. Hachi, I, I promised you a platform uh, to discuss and promote what you're doing here in the southwest of WA. Tell us what you're up to with 621. What can people expect uh, to see evolve over the next little while there? Yeah, so we're in the period of review at the moment. So we're about halfway into that and we hope to announce our our vision for it and our plan in the next two to two and a half weeks. Um, 
clearly we're going to be very committed to local content and being part of the local community. I fundamentally believe that a radio station at its heart is there to be a companion and provide a great service to the community. Um, there'll be more sport. I can tell you, tell you that for sure. It's just a matter of how much more. And, um, and we'll review the format um, aggressively in the coming couple of weeks. We'll start with AFL footy next weekend. So our AFL Nation broadcast will be heard on Spirit 621 from next Thursday night. We'll also do every Fremantle and West Coast game and give uh, local clients the opportunity to be involved in the footy for the first time. I'll just move over a bit there, mate. So, the, sorry, the West Coast and the uh, the Frio yeah. games, good to see. Yeah, we'll do all the West Coast and Fremantle games. We'll also do a longer pre-game into Bunbury only so that our commentators can talk uniquely to the Bunbury audience in a pre-game sense as a standalone market before we start to syndicate around the rest of the state so we can be a little tailored to local clients in Bunbury who might want a different connection using the power of, of talent to do it. And that's quite unique. Um, we'll look at more sport programming and more... <laughs> Uh, talk formats as our dogs go. Excuse me, we've got we've got two dogs, Alfie and Augie. Mate, so and both... One of the things I've loved about this time is we're getting to know people on a whole new level. And it's nice uh, to know that uh, I'm not the only one with a dog in the background. <laughs> that comes in yeah. and say hello at these moments. Quite, it's quite interesting when you're in the middle of a, of a pitch or something and the dog starts barking at the camera at the right wrong time. <laughs> um, and that's but everyone we've all learned how to work from home. Like I would think you and I have got to know each other way more. Uh, aggressively and, under, and had spent much more meaningful time together yeah. in, because of the tech. Where would we have done that four months ago? Probably you would have waited for me to fly into to town to catch up. And so we've become good friends quickly and that's great. Um, so I think we've all learned, there's so many good things that come out of it. And I think the commitment to community has been huge. People uh, now care more about their town than they ever have, more about their local street, their neighbours. We're a bit back to the future, I think, on that. Um, yeah, the, the whole buy local thing, it's had no resonance for some time and it's, and it's been the bane of so many small to medium-sized business operators, it's, um, particularly in towns like, like ours and, and Albany and, and Esperance and so on, where they lose business to the capital city centre um, and, and yet the local sporting club comes and knocks on the door and says, can you support us and so on. But it now finally does have some traction, doesn't it? it it's, it's finally, actually, people are realising that shopping local does help on, on so many levels. No doubt. In, in Victoria here, we just finished a campaign today called Be Good to Your Hood, which uh, like went that. for four weeks and was all about picking an area of Melbourne a day that we wanted to shine a light on, support local traders. Uh, we've also done things like on air, like What's Open, where you can just really ring in and tell people you're open uh, yeah. and be part of the conversation. And that's been you know, really cool. Um, we've also done you know, some small business grants. Um, you know, I'm a massive believer. My mum was, a, uh, my late mother, a great uh, member of the Warrigal community in country Victoria. It was on every, you know, every committee known to man, every cause, believed in the power of people in local towns, believed in helping each other, having your neighbours back, checking in on the people. So I guess, you know, country towns are where we began our, our, our ride. We've fundamentally been born in regional Australia. Yeah. Um, Bunbury is not a country town by any means. It is a you know, thriving uh, regional city and region, but it also has a great country town warmth and feel to it. And that is the best of both worlds for me. Um, my chairman uh, has a house uh, half an hour away and I've visited there regularly. He's a Perth-based uh, chairman. Um, the region's just so incredible. I think it's absolutely amazing that Bustleton and Melbourne now can connect via plane. I like to think that tourism from Victoria into the region will be a, a huge thing and we can be part of that experience and part of the, the helping get people into the area to create more revenue and more jobs in the, in the community. So I'm, I'm really excited to be part of it. Um, equally, we don't come to town thinking we know everything. You know, we're here to listen, uh, observe and, and, and try and be a different platform and a different way of connecting to perhaps what's been a little traditional in the area. Sure. Well, mate, thank you very much for your time today. It's been really a pleasure to catch up with you and have a chat uh, about business. And you can proudly sit in amongst the brilliant business minds tour. Um, <laughs> look forward to working with you personally uh, through RMS, but also through our clients as we explore uh, what opportunities they might be able to find with Spirit 621. Um, and however that evolves. So all the best, mate, and thanks again for joining us today. Thank you very much, Glenn. Lovely to chat. Uh, very much looking forward to uh, having a conversation 
uh, with you in the future and here to, um, to learn and be part of the, of the great Southwest and really appreciate your time. Cheers, man.